We've all grown to love and adore our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But this isn't the only identity our precious Tom Holland has portrayed. The charismatic young actor has voiced many well-loved animated characters, and trust us, we were as shocked as you may be to find this out. In today's video, we're going to be diving into the various characters Holland has portrayed till date. Jack of all trades is a master of none, but evidently, Holland has mastered the art of voice acting. Unsurprisingly, the young Brit has managed to bag quite a few roles voicing characters apart from the teen superhero we all know and love. He's played the roles of Ian on Onward, Walter in Spies in Disguise, ultra lovable dog Jip in Doolittle, and top it off, he has played the character of Sho in Studio Ghibbles' The Story of Variety. And it isn't just limited to this, he's voice acted as Percy Pig, too! The stellar performance as show seemingly went uncredited. Nowadays, everyone knows Tom Holland is one half of the Tom Holland and Zendaya power couple. Hey, we're not complaining. And the utterly adorable Spider-Man and even Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie. However, at the beginning of his career, he did not receive as much recognition. In fact, he provided a voice in the Studio Ghibli anime film The Secret World of Variety, which was one of Tom's first acting roles in film, but it went completely uncredited. Starring in Billy Elliot the musical, he started on stage way before he ever rubbed elbows with fellow Spider-Man Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. 2008, exactly four months after his birthday, he earned his first interview. At the ripe age of 15, he secured his first cinematic acting role in a Studio Ghibli anime movie, Hayao Mizaki's The Secret World of Variety, alongside some huge stars like Amy Poehler, Will Arnett, and even Carol Burnett. Holland voiced his character. In the UK dub and Studio Ghibbles The Secret World of Variety, he voiced Sho, who lives an uneventful life while recovering from a heart condition until he discovers Variety, a tiny borrower. In a 2012 interview for the anime while speaking about Sho Holland, he said that he likes the fact that it's kind of set away from home. It's like he's kind of on his own and setting off on a little adventure. He continued to say the character realizes there's these little people that run around the house borrowing stuff and he wants to catch one. So that aspect is what he was kind of looking forward to playing. While the height difference between Ariety and Sho provided a fun dynamic in the movie for Tom, the height and physical appearance weren't why he was excited to play Sho in the anime for his first cinematic role ever. Speaking of height differences, we'd assume he'd be used to it now. <coughs> Looking at you, Miss Zendaya. He said he sympathized with Sho because he didn't have many friends and because of his condition. When he read the script, he says he really felt quite affectionate towards the character and how sorry he felt for him until he found Ariety and felt better. Unfortunately, there is little to no information available about why his first cinematic acting role in the Studio Ghibli film role went uncredited. Even fans on Twitter noticed this in digital releases of the movie. He went by unknown in this film debut for many fans while the actor's name would go on to blow up in popularity thanks to Captain America, Civil War, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Before his first film role in the Studio Ghibli anime movie, he could hardly compare everything he had done prior to it. For Peter Parker, animation proved especially difficult for him to grasp. He admitted that animation was quite tricky to get all the timing right, like when to sync his voice with the character's voice. Other than that, he really enjoyed it, and it was a really good experience. Man's best friend indeed. Dr. Doolittle's dog Jip is voiced by none other than our very own Tom. Ironically, Robert Downey Jr. plays the doc in the fantasy adventure film, so it feels kind of full circle. Yeah? Still too soon? Okay, sorry. He and his dog, Tess, and would just bring her into the studio. She has to be one of the cutest pups we've ever seen. Clearly, the sentiments ring true for the cast because RDJ asked for a round of applause from the audience for Holland's adorable pit bull Tessa. When he asked for a roundup over the weekend, Tom paid a sweet tribute to Tessa by taking to his Instagram page to share pictures from Doolittle's premiere in London, captioning it with sentiments that he thoroughly enjoyed the premiere. He also added that he thinks it's safe to say Tess stole the show, and we simply have to agree. However, the movie has not exactly done that well at the box office so far, receiving a critical mauling in its first reviews and its earnings of $57 million in the U.S. as per reports. Surprisingly, the actor has revealed another faucet to his acting chops, and that would be voicing iconic British character Percy Pig. In 1992, by British retailer Marks & Spencer, the Percy Pig character was born and is now the face of a variety of pig-shaped confectionery. And Mr. Park, we mean Tom, is the voice of Percy Pig in the Marks & Spencer Christmas commercial for the first time in nearly 30 years of existence that the character's voice has been heard. No pressure. In the commercial, in the dead of night, Percy is wakened by the magic of the Christmas fairy played by Don French. He excitedly explores the Stratford Food Hall and discovers all the food the retailer has to offer this Christmas, and it ranges from beautiful Christmas pudding to delicious-looking smoked salmon. While speaking to Metro, the actor said it took him less than a second to say yes to voicing Percy because he has loved Percy Pig for as long as he can remember. Getting the snort right was a challenge, but he hopes he nailed it and that you'll all like what you hear. He also added that he did consider asking for a lifetime supply of Percy Pigs, but figured he's got to save room for all that amazing M&S Christmas food. 
On November 3rd, the commercial was first aired and presented the next day during Good Morning Britain, UK broadcaster ITV's breakfast show. With animation by MPC, the campaign was created by Grey London. Sherry Crammond, director of marketing for M&S Food, said that the Christmas food range this year is better than ever, and who better to tell customers about their delicious Christmas food range than the much-beloved M&S icon and national treasure himself, Percy Pig. Adding to that, she said, of course, he couldn't have just any voice, and having Tom give Percy Pig his first words was about as exciting as it gets. Tom has been rather notorious for accidentally dropping spoilers left and center, but he has apparently learned how to keep a secret. Well, it seems that Disney still needs some convincing, even if Sony may have trusted Tom enough to divulge Spider-Man 3's secrets to him. The star jokes that he still hasn't seen it because Disney is scared of him spoiling the new Pixar film onward. He said that he hasn't seen it yet because they don't let him see the movies beforehand knowing that he'll inadvertently end up dropping spoilers. And so he'll watch it at the premiere with all the fans, and they'll cry in solidarity together. Look, how many times has Tom Holland spoiled a movie at this point? Come on, Disney. It's fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. There is no thrice or whatever number after. Seemingly, Disney has learned its lesson, and despite their great working relationship, it wouldn't come as a shock if the Mouse House would rather be safe than sorry when it comes to the popular actors' films. We don't hold it against them either. While speaking on Good Morning America ahead of the release of the movie, he said he hadn't seen Onward yet because Disney wouldn't let him see the movie beforehand. That's because Disney knows that the young Brit simply can't be trusted with a secret because despite the best of intentions, he'll inevitably spoil things. Let's just say he's the Michael Scott of secret keeping. Despite wanting to keep the secret with his whole heart and soul, he tries and inevitably fails because he simply isn't built for it. So sad for Tom that, like a common peasant, he didn't get to see Onward in advance and had to catch it at the premiere. Silver linings always exist, so at least he got to experience all the emotion of of the film with an audience and experienced Onward for the first time with the fans. We suppose the wait may have been worth it after all. In reality, it's probably his busy schedule that prevented him from seeing Onward, and not Disney's fear of him spoiling it, and Tom is being his typical jokester self. But the actor is definitely aware that at this point he has a reputation and a well-earned one at that, albeit for spoiling things. At least he's owning up to his own shortcomings in a fun way, rather than denying it, which makes it amusing for all of us. Sure, he may know what he did during production along with his lines, but truly the less knowledge he has, the less information is at risk of getting spilled to the public. So, really, the actor not seeing his movies in advance might actually be a smart strategy for everyone in the grand scheme of things. As is the case with any movie, it's best if you don't have the ending spoiled in advance, even if Onward isn't the kind of movie where there are critical secrets that must be protected in the way it is for a Marvel movie. Tom lent his voice to the lead character Walter Beckett in animation comedy Spies in Disguise, which also had Will Smith voicing Lance Sterling, a spy. Glad that happened before the infamous incident occurred. In a recent interview, he revealed why he chose to be part of the film. He said that Walter is happy-go-lucky kid which attracted him to the character. He continued by saying he's excited about using his brain for good to make a difference in his workplace and is really positive. The idea of a challenge and a mission and going into the field is extremely exciting to him. However, the most endearing quality he possesses is that he's trying to change the agency's way of thinking instead of killing or blowing people up. He's actively trying to make everyone happy, more positive and ultimately safe, which to him made him really drawn to Walter's character. How stinking cute. Well, that's all we have for you today, folks. Don't forget to smash the like button, 